guys and welcome back to my channel. Today it's a very chill video. As you can see, I'm in quarantine obviously, so I'm just wearing comfortable clothes. I not I didn't prepare the video at all. I just decided to do this today just because I have time now. I'm on a break and I am currently vlogging my TBR clear out readathon, but I thought that you know what? Since I have time, I should actually film something to post in the meantime. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but my neighbor is singing. Uh, he does that from time to time. Um, I don't know if people like it or not. Uh, I don't have a problem with it, but sometimes he starts playing just at random times. Like one time he did it like 10 p.m. and I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not up for it. So, uh, So I'm sorry if you can hear that. I hope that you can still hear me. I'm going to show you what I did today, like now. So as you can see, I was watching something and you probably guessed from the title. I was watching the first episode of The Truth About the Harry Cupboard affair. I, I I was saying the truth about the Harry Cupboard, but apparently it's not Cupboard, it's Cupboard or something. Um, okay, so I was watching the first episode of the TV series uh, that is based on this book by Joel Dicker, uh, just because I wanted to see if I actually wanted to give the series a shot. Um, if you follow my channel, you know that I got this book a while ago. I think I got it in 2018. I think this was featured on my Christmas haul of 2018, but I read it or I start reading it in 2019, like December 2019. It took me less than a month to read it, even though it's like really thick. Uh, but this is a mystery contemporary novel and I mean, it's not really dense. Uh, the only thing that I would say is not a typical mystery novel because usually those novels are really fast-paced and this one is really inconsistent. Sometimes it's really slow-paced, sometimes it's really fast-paced. That bothered me, I have to be honest. But um, yeah, it was a quick read uh, for someone like me who reads slowly. <laughs> so I think I started reading this on December 17th and I finished it like on the 4th of January, something like that. Um, so that was pretty good, considering that we, you know, we have Christmas and New Year's and all that. Um, but still, I was really excited about reading this because one of my friends read this like years ago and she said that you're gonna love that book, you really have to read it. She actually offered to lend me her copy a bunch of times, but since the TV series was out and Patrick, <laughs> Patrick Dempsey is uh, in the TV series, I was like, nah, I want my own copy because I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. Um, and also, I don't like borrowing books from friends. I liked it. I, it never crossed my mind to DNF this book, but I didn't love it and I'm still disappointed. Um, I thought this was going to be a five-star read for me. I, I thought that I was going to love the book. I didn't love it. I mean, I, I still liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. You know, it was a page turner, regardless of the pace inconsistency, but still, it was really unrealistic at times and I just couldn't bear it. I'm going to contextualize you a little bit on the plot, just so you um, know what this is about. So this is about Marcus Goldman. So Marcus Goldman is a famous young author. Uh, he published his first book and he was successful. So he's got a lot of money, you know, all the connections, the girls, the house, the cars, everything like that. But now it's time to start on his second book, especially because he has a contract with his publisher and he can't. He simply can't start his second book. He's just He's lacking inspiration, and that happens to every writer, I believe. And he's experiencing writer's block, and that's just driving him mad. So he decides to visit his old college professor, uh, the man who actually, you know, motivate him and inspire him to become an author, uh, Harry 
Cabert, apparently. <laughs> um, Harry was his university professor, but he's also a writer, a very successful writer. He's 70 something years old now. Um, he still lives in the same house uh, in Guskov, in a very small town called Aurora. And he's unmarried, he hasn't got any kids, he has a dog, I believe. Um, I, I think so. He is still there for Marcus, even though Marcus sort of forgot about him when he became famous. I think that happens all the time anyway. When people just taste fame for a little while, they just become full of themselves and basically they, in this case Marcus, forgot about his tutor, uh, the man who inspired him. Uh, but when he found himself unable to write anything, he decided to call him and paid him a visit. While he's there, he finds out that Harry had a romantic affair in the 1970s, 1975, I believe, when he was 33 years old, with a 15-year-old girl called Nola. Nola disappeared, no one knows where she is. Um, she disappeared in 1975, the end of the summer, um, and no one actually knew about their relationship. Uh, Marcus found out because he was just going through Harry's stuff, trying to understand how Harry's genius work and how he could be like him, and he found out the truth. Harry was a little bit upset that he was just going through his stuff uh, without permission, but he just told him about their relationship, at least the general bit. They met, they fell in love. Um, yes, she was a minor. Yes, he was 33 years old. And yes, she disappeared and she's probably dead. Um, and Harry never really recovered. That's why he spent his life alone, like he never fell in love with anyone else. Um, he lives for her memory and her memory alone. A few days later, a body is discovered in Harry's garden and people believe that it is Nola's body and he is automatically accused of murder. Uh, Marcus decides to drop everything and just go back to Guskov and try to find out exactly what happened in order in order to save Harry's life because he's actually facing life in prison or maybe even death penalty. Uh, I think so. I might be <laughs> exaggerating now. Um, so he decides to go back and just I'm going to focus on trying to find enough information and proof that Harry didn't do anything. Basically that's the story. I don't want to... I'm going to talk about spoilers like specific things but I'll, I'll let you know when I start. Uh, but that's the main plot and it seems really interesting and I still think it is really interesting because basically we're trying to solve a, a crime that happened 30 something years ago and um, I really enjoyed how the plot is developed even though there are a couple of things that really bother me because they are just unrealistic. Marcus finds information easily, you know, everyone is like, oh let's help him because he's investigating, like he's a a civilian, he's not a policeman, he, he's not a detective, and he, you know, he finds all these pieces of information and proof that he wants, just like that. I really liked Harry's character, I think he's very, very complex, because you start off by really liking this guy. Um, the way Marcus talks about him, it just seems like he's a really good guy, he just has a good heart, he just wants to write, he just wants to get his stuff out there, he wants to make people happy with the things that he writes and he takes pleasure in teaching literature to kids and yeah, it's just you can't help but not like him. But then you find out that he had this relationship with a 15 year old when he was 33 and you get a bit uncomfortable. Even if you don't want to, you get a bit uncomfortable. I think that the way the author, Joel Dicker, decided to develop this character it was really interesting because you start off by liking him, then you start finding out more things about his past, making you really uncomfortable, but then again you're like, oh, but he's actually a good guy, but I can't actually think he's a good guy. Can I still like him? Can it's complicated. The way the character was developed was to make you think about certain topics that maybe you sometimes or maybe you never consider before sometimes you just don't pay enough attention to like finding out something about someone's past someone that you thought you knew and 
then having to reconsider your thoughts or how you feel about that person. Obviously, we don't know Harry, but from the information that is provided to us, we ended up liking him. He's a really good guy. He's just, you know, he's there to give you advice. He's never upset, even though Marcus left him and forgot about him when he got famous. He opened his door right away and he's just, he tried to help him and he's a good writer, he's a good teacher, he's a good professor. But then you found out all of these things about his past. He had a relationship with a 15 year old girl. He knew better. He actually planned on just leaving town with her, you know, move to Canada and start their life together. It just, it makes you uncomfortable. It makes you, it makes you feel a little bit awkward. At least I did. At the same time, you think about the fact that this happened in the 70s. This would never happen now or would it, you know? All of these questions is just, they're always there confronting you. And I really like the way this book made me feel about a character. It made me feel really uncomfortable at times and I really appreciate the author's um, writing and just creative process while developing this character. I think it was amazing and it is a really complex character. I like the fact that Patrick Dempsey was picked to play Harry. I know I'm biased because I like him and you can call me trivial and all that, I don't care. Uh, I like Patrick Dempsey, deal with it. But I actually think that he was a good choice. The first episode of the series was really interesting and I might actually watch the whole season because there's only one season. The writing is accessible, it's not very dense. But from time to time, it just feels like the author decided to through like some big words. <laughs> uh, I have to admit that I, I actually read a Portuguese translation, so I don't know if, if you feel the same way if you read the original or the English edition, but um, at least in the Portuguese translation, you know, some big words are thrown out there just for the sake of it. And in, in very casual conversations, which makes me think, which makes me think that no one would actually talk like that. We're talking, we're being casual, we're friends, or we know each other for a long time, even if we're not friends, and then all of a sudden you just start like throwing some big words that I actually had to go check the meaning of one because I didn't know what that was. Um, it was weird and uncomfortable. It made it seem like really forced. Uh, that only happened like once or twice, so I'm not going to be upset about it, but still wasn't one of my favorite things. There was one character that I really, really hated, and this is not a spoiler because I'm not going to um, give you any details, but Marcus' mom is the most obnoxious, horrible, ignorant character in this book. And there are just some really obnoxious characters here, but Marcus' mom, I mean, I don't know if she was supposed to be like a comic relief or something. She is just a walking cliche. I don't understand how this author was able to develop such an amazing character like Harry in the sense that it makes you feel uncomfortable and at the same time you want to be on his side but you can't. And then Marcus' mom. Because Marcus' mom is just, I don't know, she didn't contribute to the plot at all. She's just a uh, older mom and she's only concerned with the fact that her son is not married and that he might have that disease. I'm actually quoting that he might have that disease that makes you like men. So you can see how ignorant she is. I know that the author was trying to convey the message that she um, lived or was part of, a, of a, a, a group of people that never really cared about, you know, uh, understanding things or actually learn about new concepts that were new to them but still I mean this was a stretch like this character was just ridiculous um, and I'm really sorry that I have to say this but I had to skim some parts because it, it was ridiculous like sometimes she would call him and we would have like two pages uh, of like the description of their phone call and I mean we got to the end and it didn't contribute in any way to the story. It was just like really, really bad. Um, <laughs> I would rather have like a silent type mom <laughs> or just not have his parents mentioned at all than this character. And she was the worst. I don't know what she was doing there, honestly. At the same time, it makes you understand why Marcus would go and seek Harry's help and advice rather than his own parents because going home was not something 
easy for him to do because he had to deal with his mom. His dad wasn't that bad, but his mom was a nightmare. And obviously he would rather just have someone like Harry on his side than having to ask his mom for advice because that would be a waste of time. Other than Marcus' mom, I think the only character that I had a problem with problem with was Harry's attorney. He's a walking stereotype. Um, he just has the weirdest argument with Marcus in the parking lot of the prison where, where Harry's staying. Like before Marcus went in to visit Harry, they have this stupid, ridiculous, out of place argument about politics. This happens a few months before Obama becomes president and Basically, <laughs> he's just saying that he can't see a woman become president, but at the same time, he can't see a black man as a president. And he just, he actually uses a couple of slurs. And again, it makes you feel uncomfortable. That argument is never mentioned again. Like a few months after this, um, Obama becomes president and that's it. A lot of things in this book could have just been left out because they just don't contribute in any way to the plot. <laughs> I think that this book is longer than it should be. Uh, I can say like, this is just a guess, but at least like 200 pages could be left out of here. Um, a couple of things were just there for the sake of it. They didn't contribute it at all to the plot. They didn't contribute to the character development. Um, they didn't give you any clues, any leads. They were just there and it really didn't matter because that's not what you were looking for. You were trying to look for, you know, the answer on what happened to Nola and is Harry guilty or not and these things were just accessories and they weren't even that good. Other than that, I like the plotline, I think it was simple but in the, at the same time realistic. Um, I like Harry's character a lot, like I said, it makes you feel uncomfortable but it's a good uncomfortable because it's making you think and consider options that you never you would never consider if you haven't read a book like this about a character like this. I really like Marcus and how he grows. He starts off as being really childish and, childish and irresponsible. He thinks he's better than anybody else. But then he starts like he gets like a reality slap and he understands that that's not the way to go. And he has a lot to learn. And when he drops everything to help Harry, um, that was good for him because it made him grow as well and try to look at his life from a different perspective because now he was going back, we have like a lot of flashbacks, he's going back and thinking about every time he talked to Harry and every time they met and how that affected him in a way and if even back then if there were any clues or um, leads on this case. Um, he was trying to think if Nola was ever mentioned or if Harry had ever mentioned his relationship or his personal life and he's just going back and go through his memories and we just have like a front row seat for that. How he just made himself, you know, useful for once because he he had a lot of accomplishments but at the same time he I think that he never felt useful in a way and this was his opportunity so... Yeah, I liked his contribution a whole lot. I'm going to talk about a few details that you might consider spoilers, so if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, uh, that's okay, you know, read the book and then come back. And if you want to stay, welcome. Um, so when I say that the book is a little bit unrealistic, I'm basically talking about the fact that Marcus is the luckiest guy in the world. He is, uh, he decides to investigate this case, right? I'm going to Harry's house while Harry's in jail and I'm just going to talk to everyone I know and I'm going to try to find out proof that he didn't do it. And everyone is talking to him. Okay, yes, they knew him because it wasn't the first time that he visited Harry. It's a very small town, people know each other, people talk. But at the same time, Everyone was against Harry because they thought he was guilty. Why would they talk to Marcus, a person who's trying to save Harry, to prove that he's innocent? Also, meets this um, policeman, he's actually the detective in charge of the case, and they start with, they, they, they don't get along that well at first, but then they just become sort of friends, and the, the detective just lets him tag along every time he goes and interviews a suspect. What? <laughs> in what universe would that happen? He's a civilian. He's sharing details about an open investigation with a civilian who's trying 
to prove the suspect is actually innocent, meaning conflict of interests. I mean, it's just, it's completely unrealistic. I mean, who would, would let you, like, what cop, what detective would let you do something like this? No cop or detective would just let you tag along and like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to ask a few questions to this person because I think uh, they have something to do with Nola's disappearance. Come with me. Oh, and by the way, yeah, just ask the questions you want to. <laughs> you can't just um, interrogate people like that. You're not a cop. Um, and these people who are being interrogated, they never actually said anything they were like okay yeah this person this civilian is here and the detective is asking me questions but that's normal but now this guy is asking me questions as well i'm going to answer even though i don't know his role in this whole thing um that's too easy <laughs> honestly that's too easy i thought that marcus would have a hard time finding evidence but then something you know he would be able to find something that would help harry and you know the police would take care of the rest and the truth would come out but no basically he just became an honorary cop and he was basically doing everything with the, the detective in charge it's just it's ridiculous he actually tras trespassed the crime scene harry's garden at some point and the detective didn't like it that's i think that's when they met uh but just gave him a warning like <laughs> that would never happen it's just so unrealistic and it's just in it was too easy. I, I was really sad about it. I didn't like it that much. Um, to be perfectly honest, I wanted him to have a hard time uh, while he was investigating, just because it, it would be more realistic. The other thing that I had a problem with was with the attorney, again. Um, but it's more or less the same thing. So the attorney calls Marcus before Marcus decides to drop everything and move to Harry's house so he can help him. He calls him just to say, you know, uh, things are kind of messed up. This is this this looks bad, but it's we're going to to work it out. I hope that we can save him and prove that he's innocent. Um, okay, so but what happened? And the attorney on the phone, he's like, okay, so I'm going to tell you, but you can't tell anyone. <laughs> this guy has never met Marcus, <laughs> and he actually says something like, oh, I'm going to tell you. All of these details that haven't been released yet um, but you know don't tell anyone Shh, it's a secret a few days later there was a leak and all the newspapers and like TV shows and whatever were talking about those important details and the attorney doesn't even consider that maybe Marcus said something Marcus didn't say anything but at the same time you don't know you talk to a complete stranger on the phone why would you share important details about an open invest investigation to a person that you're not even like you don't even know that well just because Harry says Marcus is someone you can trust you don't know <laughs> why would you do that and then the big plot twist more or less let's say we we'll get more or less here. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you an idea. And we find out who killed no Nola. But then, oh, plot twist. That's why you have like 200 pages left. The plot twist was completely forced. Uh, the idea of Nola having a, a mental disorder, personality disorder type of thing. And she believed she was her mother and she would hit herself because she was a bad girl and the dad who was a priest or something knew about it but didn't do anything uh in order to help his uh daughter i mean that's just it and, and harry didn't know she had a, a mental disorder like he thought that she was completely healthy he he didn't know she had a personality disorder that um made her do some terrible things to herself where did that come from? You know, it's just, it felt really forced. Um, I would be happy if the book ended when we found out the first time who killed Nola, or we thought that that someone killed Nola. Um, I think I would be very happy with that ending, but then we had 200 pages more to read and then everything changed again. So, oh no, that didn't happen, this happened. Even though I really like Harry's character, on the other hand, uh, I can see a lot of flaws Besides the whole having a relationship with a 15-year-old girl, which is in itself bad, 
um, and it made me feel very uncomfortable. He's someone who's like well educated, he's a writer, uh, he's 33 in 1975, he has his whole life in front of him, he has everyone, like every girl wants to be his girlfriend. And he just wants to spend his life with a 15 year old who he lies to because she thinks he's a very famous author in New York, but he isn't, he's actually like going through his savings trying to write his first novel, or rather his first like big novel, and he's not that famous at all, and he's broke. No one knows him in New York, and he lies because he knows she's a 15-year-old girl. She's not going... Sorry, I got a text. She's not going to accept the fact that he lied to her. She's not going to accept the fact that, oh, you're not who you said you are, and I want to be, like, popular and famous and go to Broadway shows and live in New York, and you lied to me, so now I don't want to be with you. Like, he knows that that's a possibility because she's immature, she's a child, but at the same time, he thinks that she's this muse, this genius, and, you know, she's there to make his life easier, and she's just someone with a great mind, and you can talk to her about everything. It's just... He had this really weird idea of Nova. And basically, I think that he looked at her and he just sort of created his perfect partner, like the person he wanted to find. And he used Nola as like the model. And he lied to himself, saying that she is all of these things when she's not. That was, um, that was out of character, in a way. Why do I think people? There's a guy there filming me, like, I don't know. The way he has his phone out of the window. <sighs> it, it's, it really looks like he's trying to take a photo of my window or filming my window. Those are my thoughts. I like the book. I never thought about DNF in the book, but it's not perfect at all. A lot of inconsistencies, a lot of plot holes that just don't make any sense. But, you know, I actually had fun reading it but you can't really read too much into it like I did because you're going to get upset and disappointed. Um, other than that, you know, I recommend this book if you're just looking for something easy uh, to distract you, but don't start this book thinking that this is like the best mystery novel you'll ever read because it's not. It has a lot of plot holes, a lot of inconsistencies, uh, but the characters are really well developed with the exception of Marcus' mom. Um, the plotline is simple and interesting, but it has a lot of plot holes, as it is not a five-star read. I think that even if you really like the book, you can't really deny all the inconsistencies and plot holes. It's really difficult for you to do that. Um, but anyway, um, I watched the first episode. I wasn't a fan of the way Marcus was introduced, and I wasn't a fan of the actor playing Marcus and the direction the character took. I really like Patrick Dempsey and the actress who plays Nola, and I forgot her name because I actually checked before I started the video, but now I can't remember. I think I'm going to watch the rest of the series, but I don't know if I'm going to do it like right now. I'm just not really feeling it. But yeah, I'm gonna keep this book because I might reread it one day, and I don't know if I want to read more by Joel Dicker, honestly. I think that this was one of his first novels, if not the first novel, or it's his second novel. So, you know there's always room for you to improve, and I want to see his progress as a writer, so I might pick up one of his other books. Um, that's it for today. Sorry for the long video. I just had a lot to say about this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!